morning guys today we are going to actually do the grab bag Kohler transplant and we're going to transplant it into this my 1957 RJ 35 now this tractor itself doesn't have the original engine it does have the original style engine in it which is a Clinton motor and you can tell that this tractor originally had a Clinton from the factory or from the garage that is from wheel horse based on where the drain hole is drilled into the frame now 1957 most of these tractors would have had a clinton 1290 which is exactly what we have here now we could tell by the drain hole is off center clinton drains are off center from the from the block so the hole is actually off center now if this was a kohler equipped unit the hole would be right in the center of the frame because that's where a Kohler drains. It drains out the center of the oil pan, essentially right here. On this engine, the pan is drilled on the other side, but it's drilled right in the center for a 3 8 pipe plug. So to get the engine off, it's a little bit cumbersome only because of the way the RJ hood fits but it's really not that bad you see rj's with the hoods cut and all this and it's like you really don't need to do that the only thing you really need to do is you need to take the belt guard off you got to get the pulley off the motor you don't have to take the very drive off you got to take the exhaust system off and then you just got to remove the spark plug you get the spark plug out of the way undo the four bolts and the throttle shoop and it slides right out of this side of the tractor. So, with that, I'm gonna do all the general disconnections of this Clinton motor. I will show you how I slide it out. And then uh, we'll start looking at the grab bag Kohler to get it in. Now, the grab bag is gonna need a couple things. One, I am gonna to have to remove the oil bath air cleaner. This will go back on once it's in the tractor, but this needs to be removed in order to snake it in. And obviously, I'll be removing the spark plug. The other thing that's a little interesting is I do have this little piece of piping on the back of the oil pan. That's for two reasons. One, obviously the drain hole is in the offset on the frame, plus this oil pan I have actually exit, uh, exits out the back, not the front. So the oil drain for the Kohler is actually back here. Um, Clinton has, you know, dual drains for either one. This oil pan on this Kohler happens to be only drilled for one side. So it's in the back. And even if it, even if I had a hole back here, it would be off center because of the Clinton motor. So I just made that or whipped up those little pieces of pipe. So the drain, the oil drain kind of comes off to the side here. Once the engine's in place, you're not even gonna see it. So let me go ahead and get the disconnections done. I got the belt guard off. It's two three eighths bolts, um, just undid the nuts. Actually the inside of the belt, this is an original 57. This is not a repro guard, which is kind of cool, but um, not that much grease in there. I'll clean it all up before I put it back on, but that is the first thing that came off. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take out this set screw, pull the pulley off. It should come right off. It's It was a brand new pulley. The crankshaft was perfectly clean and it. This thing's never sat outside. You can see that there is a bunch of grease and slop, but we're all set there. So I'm gonna get that off. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the exhaust system out of the way now i am going to have to craft a whole new exhaust system uh, on the basis that the clinton engine the exhaust comes out at a 45 degree angle to the carburetor uh, a Kohler is 90 degrees so it's going to come out straight and there's going to be a 90 to go and i'm going to go ahead and probably reuse this uh elbow the fitting and then this Kohler muffler uh, I will have to go to like Home Depot or something like that and get a piece of half inch black iron pipe that's a little bit longer as well as a piece of black iron 90 and then the corresponding little closed nipple uh, to go into the engine block. But that's that. That's for a little bit later. Let me go ahead and get this stuff off. I'm going to go on the other side, disconnect the throttle cable, disconnect the uh, fuel line, uh, and then disconnect the kill switch. Uh, remove the spark plug and then this engine will be out. So pretty pretty simple 
And when I be back, when I get back, or when we see each other, it will be MIA. So the myth has been busted. You do not need to cut the hood of an RJ in order to get the motor out. I feel bad and sorry for all the RJs that lost their hood because the person that owned it, owned the tractor, was an idiot. Literally, it was, it had to be faster for me to take the motor out the way I did than it would have been to cut the hood. Because everything I just did, except for the spark plug, would have had to been done in order to get the engine out. And trust me, it was quicker to take this spark plug out of the engine than it was to cut the hood. So now, with that myth busted, <laughs> this is not a myth, this is actual reality. These stupid engines, they leak oil like crazy. So I need to get to cleaning before we put the grab bag cooler on. Just finished prepping the Kohler uh, for installation. Took off the oil bath air cleaner, uh, popped the spark plug out, and basically that's it. The kill wire, I'm gonna leave it like this for right now until I get it into place, and then I will uh, cut it and put the loop uh, that I need in order to um, go ahead and mount the kill switch in. Um, outside of that, it should just kind of slide in. This might give me a little bit of a hassle, but for the most part, this thing should just slide right in uh, like the Clinton slid right out. Still no need to cut the hood. So the project has grown a little bit more than I anticipated. One thing is the throttle cable for the Clinton engine was too short to reach to the governor on the K91. So I went to my cabinet, pulled out another... Um, throttle cable i'm cutting it down now to fit uh, i have to you know hook it up to the end of the throttle here bolt it back down send the cable through the little hole it loops around to the governor that'll be done in a few minutes i pretty much have everything i need for that i did put the engine pulley back on it just needs to be the set screw just needs to be tightened down uh, the only thing i needed to the only thing you got to be cognizant of when you do this is you make sure that the belt is running straight so the groove and the pulley lines up with the groove right here on the very drive i didn't make any changes to the adjustment there really should be no need to make any changes to the adjustment because the Kohler crankshaft is in theory in the same place as the Clinton motor. The, the, all the dimensions of the motors, between the two motors is exactly the same. So, oh, and then I gotta run back to Home Depot to get another piece of uh, pipe here for the exhaust. I bought this one. I thought this was the one I was gonna need. I actually need a closed one. One that doesn't have any of this space. The threads are right up against each other. So I gotta go get one of those. And then we can put this thing, put the exhaust together and really, we're right there. So let me get these last couple things done, hook up, the th uh, hook up the fuel line, and we should be pretty much ready to go. I got the fittings that I need to put the exhaust in. One of the things I try to do is I try not to screw the uh, nipple that is comes right out of the motor real tight in the motor. And the reason for that is because of the heat and stuff and sometimes a little bit of rust it just becomes a real pain in the neck to get these out plus this port has been you know we've got a broken bolt at the top and i threaded the i put the threads in the port itself so i'm going to try not to tighten it too tight in there so what i need to do in order to i should have stayed over there sorry in order to set the the length so in other words to have the piece that comes out of the motor, right, like this, 
and then you have the elbow. All right, now the elbow's gotta be in such a position that when you put the big pipe in, it kinda comes close to this hood stand. So we need, I need to adjust the depth of the, of the elbow itself. So one thing I like to do is I like to tighten it really tight into the elbow and then screw this into the motor. Now, I kind of go back and forth, back and forth. So in other words, I'll take this, I'll put it in the vise, and then I will tighten the, oops, the 90 degree elbow into place. I'll go screw it into the motor, and I'll go back and forth uh, until I get it to where I want it to be. Meaning, I want it to be in this position, with the big main pipe coming out of the nipple coming over here because the exhaust the muffler is going to be here I'll, I'll do the adjustment back and forth back and forth until i get it to just about where i want it and then i know that the piece the nipple in the elbow is super tight and then the other end is just where it needs to be in the motor just to cause a little bit of friction so let me go do that get back and forth back and forth back and forth uh get that set up and i'll show you what it looks like Okay, I got the exhaust pretty much in place. Uh, the 90 degree elbow is, you know, the nipples pre is extremely tight in the elbow. Uh, I just hand tighten this main pipe into the elbow and basically just kind of hand tight every height, hand tighten the muffler onto this 45 degree elbow. This is tight on the pipe, so it's not gonna move. And I have maybe, oh, I'd say, maybe a quarter of an inch of spacing between the pipe and the stand so it's not actually touching. Um, the pipe itself is loose in the port. It's actually uh, spinning in the port, not in the elbow. It's fine. If a little bit of black soot you know, kind of leaks out around it, it's, it's no big deal. It doesn't matter. And then I have the uh, bracket, which bolts into these two holes right here. And once that's all tightened down, this muffler or the exhaust system itself is not going to move. And it gives me the option to get it out of the motor quite easily. So I'm going to go ahead and final mount the final mount the exhaust on. I'm going to get the belt guard back on. I'm going to put some fuel in the tank and we'll see what happens. And there you go guys, the grab bag cooler has been installed on my 1957 RJ35. Uh, it does need a little bit of carb work, it, it's farting and popping a little bit and hunting and picking, but I, it's probably 90% dialed in. You can hear a little bit of a click or a little bit of a tick. That's one of the valves, that's probably that valve lash, I think it was on the intake, it's a little big. But other than that, this engine runs really good. And clearly the uh, 57 doesn't mind the motor. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all your viewership on the Grab Bag Kohler project. I hope you liked it. Uh, next up is the Wheel Horse Show for this engine and tractor. So we'll see you there, hopefully, coming up at the end of June. Until then, please uh, keep an eye out for upcoming videos like share and subscribe if you could please and if you don't mind or if you would like to look, see another video ring that bell so until the next project you guys have a great day